I'm in my Airbnb now. My travel days were actually extremely crazy. Basically, I know with layovers, um, there can be delays. So I try to always, I always give myself minimum an hour with a layover. Um, because these 30 minute, 20 minute layovers, no, I don't trust that. Because even if your flight's on time, you could get um, held up at the transition gate or whatever, and then you could miss your flight. So I did have one layover that was a little shorter. It was an hour and five minutes, but it still felt like a good amount of time. And then lo and behold, um, the flight before that one, because I had, I had several layovers in this case, um, got delayed by 40 minutes. And it was an hour layover, and the next flight was my international one. So obviously that's um, really stressful. First of all, Whoever this should have got his name, but not really, because I'm not here to, not here to be that white person and like ruin people's days um, and jobs. <laughs> Regardless, just gonna complain a little. Whoever the customer service guy was, he was really, um, he was really rude. Because I was like, well, is there any way I could make that connection flight? Da 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 da. Like obviously a little frustrated, but not at him. And he was like. You know what, I can't help you here, you need to go talk to them at the front, like, and stop arguing with me. Like, all this stuff, and I literally told him, I was like, I'm not arguing with you, I'm just trying to figure out the situation. I was in the DC, um, gosh, what was it called? The DC Maryland airport, something, I forget. And the way they set everything up there was stupid because, again, this layover problem is obviously happening internally, but they made me go outside of security to um to try to talk to somebody about fixing it they made all of us with international flights go outside um and talk to the front desk at american so it was horrible um because then basically when i went out and talked to them the alternative they gave me was not a good one because again behind the scenes this guy had been like oh you need to hurry so they could try to give you an earlier flight i get there there's no earlier flight we're just going to try to completely rebook you I mean, it's kind of what I expected. I wasn't even gonna get out of security because I expected it to go like that But then I figured you know, let me just try so I could say that I tried in case I do Miss my other flight. So then after I was done with that I had to go back through security, which by the way, um <laughs> I re personally usually not all the time but normally speaking I, when I'm now that I'm pregnant I request pat-downs rather than going through airport security I know there's really not necessarily a purpose in doing it because um it's not technically supposed to be a danger to you or your child, but I just feel like since I fly a lot, um, just doing it less is better than doing it more. I know there's technically probably more radiation in the plane than going through security, but um, just something that I do. I don't know. I had to get patted down again. So obviously when you get a pat down, it takes a little longer to go through security, all that stuff. So at this point, I was just going back through security to get my original flight, just like low-key crying. <laughs> they were all just looking at me like, People are so mean. Like, if I saw someone crying, I would be like, oh, are you okay? But everyone's just like... <laughs> Felt like I was in Miami again, because that's really how I'd be there. People do show concern occasionally, but most of the time, they're just very confused. But it's fine. I mean, sometimes when you're crying, you really don't want anybody to say anything to you anyways, because then you have to be like, oh, thank you so much. Like, sometimes you really do just want to cry. And, like, I feel like I was, like, angry crying, so probably my face was like, don't talk to me. <laughs> So anyways, that was funny, but I got through security, um, I had to get another pat down, and let me just say, this woman that patted me down was so aggressive, like all the pat downs I've had up to that point, because I probably had at least like five other ones, like I do fly pretty frequently, they were all honestly kind of chill. Sometimes I was like, are they even patting me down enough? Like, this woman completely forgot to pat down my hair, like what is this security system? But let me tell you, this woman was not playing. She was doing the waistband. She was doing it all up in the hair. She was trying to move it around. Like, she was really doing the most. But I didn't get it from a sense of, like, she was trying to make my life harder. I feel like she was probably just new or something. Like, I don't know what it was. That was low-key horrible, too. Like, when she did, like, the leg thing, she, like, like, up in, <laughs> like, up in there. I was like, excuse me, fam? But, like, I didn't say anything. Because at this point, I was like, you know, I gotta make this flight, like... Is not that deep whatever let's just keep it moving she's just trying to do her job so I got back through security and I got to my gate again within like 15 minutes of it being about to leave um, I got in the plane and then I will let me just say this I'm a very honest person for the most part um, I really try generally speaking not to lie because I just don't see the purpose of it the only time I do lie in situations is in situations like this where I feel like 
it's a white lie and it's not like a complete lie it's just easier than explaining the situation because like i could have told the lady like no like i just really need to make this flight because i'm pregnant and if i don't i'm gonna be stranded in philadelphia and i don't know what i'm gonna do because i don't have money to get another airbnb like could have done all that or like i don't want to be in the airport for two days trying to like get another flight sleeping on the floor like i'm i'm five months pregnant but instead of doing all that i was just like i really need to make this flight like i have a wedding because <laughs> it's just it's short and sweet everyone can relate to it a wedding a wedding you don't want her to miss a wedding so the lady was like a wedding <laughs> okay girl you're gonna make this flight we've got you um well she didn't sound like that she was an older lady from new jersey but i'm not gonna I'm not even gonna try to do that accent right now so she was like you know we've got you don't worry i let them know looked up my next flight for me because you know when you do tickets ahead of time they don't even tell you the gate number on the ticket so i'm sitting here like i'm about to have like 10 minutes to get to this flight once i land and um i don't even have my gate number i don't even have anything so the lady i should have got her name she was such an angel thank you ma'am and then there was another guy trying to make his flight as well who had one like 10 minutes before me but his wasn't an international one but still we were like he was like my second angel because we were like in this together we just both got off that plane and we were both just running together <laughs> like you've got this you're gonna make this flight i believe in you um thank god for him because my directional my directional i don't think that's a word my skills with directions are not the best despite the fact that i do travel by myself a lot which like you wouldn't you wouldn't think but that's the reality honestly if he hadn't been there i think i would have gotten so lost um trying to find my way to the um to the the trolley that basically takes you not trolley but you know the little bus that takes you from one uh terminal to the next because we landed in one terminal then i had to get to a whole other terminal for my flight so um luckily i was with this man and we both ran there together and i probably would have missed it otherwise because it was off in this weird corner we got on the, the thing right away, little bus, and um, it took us there as fast as possible. I think I boarded the plane like 8.57 or something, and the flight left at 9.15. So the whole thing was really just a miracle because the, our flight was actually supposed to land from what they like. You know, they predicted a little bit ahead of time, or not ahead of time, they predicted a little bit late just to like give people realistic expectations, but it was predicted we would like land and be off the flight by like 8.58. And the flight leaves at 9.15, but thankfully we landed more like 8.40, 8.45. So I had that like extra 10 minutes to get to that flight. The whole entire plane was already boarded. I was running. They're like, Amsterdam, come on, come on. And the first thing I did when I made it was just called Nate. And it was just like, I made it. <laughs> and like, so happy. And then as soon as I got to my seat, the lady was like, oh. <laughs> because she really thought she was about to have two full seats this whole flight and then last minute this little pregnant girl comes and takes our other seat but she was actually really sweet we talked a little bit she wasn't advertising from san diego i forgot her name too so there's that i don't even know if we got each other's names i think we just told each other's about like our lives and then just left so there's that but she was like she was a funny seat partner she drank dude she was living her best life she drank so much wine she literally i think got like four glasses of wine like mid trip she, that woman was very drunk and very happy <laughs> just living her best life as i said so basically that was my flight experience other than that it was uneventful if that hadn't happened it would have just been a normal flight experience but um <laughs> that made it really crazy and kind of an adventure i'm just really thankful everything worked out i'm thankful that i stuck with my gut and took the original flight because otherwise it would have been a whole other rodeo i would have gotten in even later and it was already you know like what 15 to 20 hours of travel so thankfully it all worked out um yeah i'm just really grateful even though towards the middle when i found everything out i was feeling kind of sad about it once i really set my mind like i'm gonna make this flight i just stayed positive i was like laughing while i was running with this guy and it just was a really good time after i got to amsterdam it was all pretty um standard i got some currency with exchange but so far i haven't had any problems just using my regular card also um i just did an uber to my airbnb <laughs> millennials i mean like honestly travel nowadays is so much more simple than it was in the past which maybe that's partially why my parents worry so much too like they don't understand that i feel like travel now is really convenient for the most part the airbnb itself has been so lovely the house is beautiful um there's a cat and i love them already and they're like my best friend here and the only other thing that's happened so far that's been really exciting has been um 
me and Nate chose a name for our daughter. I'll probably do a separate video on that because that's really exciting. And then the only the last thing I will mention is just how hilarious it is that I packed for this trip so badly, so badly because literally our gender reveal was the night before my trip and I hadn't packed yet because I wanted to do a whole little video for it and of course that all went out the window because it was just like, like what can I, I, I forgot like all my shirts. So for the most part I have more like dresses and tunics, I'm just wearing pants under them also because it's cold. But like I didn't really bring any shirts, so I have one like longer skirt that's really pretty. But then I don't, I don't have a way to wear it because I don't have a shirt that goes with it because I forgot it. So I'm gonna try to just buy some clothes here, but I need to find like a thrift store or something because these prices, I'm telling you. I went to one store and I bought something for 50% off, and it was still like 28 US dollars. Like your girl don't got that kind of money. I I spent way too much money already on my first like. 48 hours here so from now on I'm trying to like budget it out but I don't know how that's gonna work because it's expensive um, that's all for now and other than that I'm just gonna show you the clothes that I have because I think it's kind of hilarious so here you go it's this and this which actually when you look at it like here it doesn't look I feel like quite as bad as um what I think I guess it's more like the items themselves that I packed because like I said um there's like a decent amount of pants and like no shirts, so <laughs> this is the shirt that I bought yesterday. And literally one pair of shoes, ugly ass shoes, because I always like bring a bunch of shoes and then don't use them, so I'm kind of trying to learn from past mistakes. Cute little garden. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And then I'm trying to find, yeah, so this is my backpack. This is literally what I brought on my entire trip, was just this one backpack. Um, it's like my solo trip backpack now, honestly, because I've only taken, this is only my second solo trip. It's not even really solo anymore, because I'm with, chilling with the homie. But um, I've always been able to fit everything in this one backpack whenever I travel alone. So that's going to be my goal, because I kind of love it. It makes life so much easier. When I remember to pack everything I need anyways.